All right, so let's try to explain what a resting membrane potential is. Well, I came up with my own definition. You can look up the definition in the book if you want to, but resting membrane potential, potential is the difference in voltage across sides of the plasma membrane of a cell at rest, meaning that a cell is not being stimulated by anything else. And if you actually put a voltmeter um, in, inside the cell and on the other end of the on the outside of the cell, it should read like a certain value. That voltmeter should give you a value. Usually, this value is varies between minus 20 millivolts to minus 90 millivolts. And it's essentially that's what it is a difference in the number of charges, which does not mean that you actually have to have positive charges in one side and negative charges on the other side, but, but an imbalance in the number of charges. Um, just like, for example, if you have more uh, cations in one side than the other, the degree of positivity of that cell would create this difference in, 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 in voltage. So, but again, let's try like, to, to see how this is established. And the way the resting membrane potential is established is because of differences in the permeability of the ions. Your plasma membrane has a certain permeability for each ion, a certain permeability for potassium ions, a certain permeability for sodium ions, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to draw here a giant cell, and I'm going to put lots of ion channels here. Specifically, I'm putting these leakage channels that will allow ions to diffuse through the plasma membrane. Highlighted in orange here are my potassium channels. So those are potassium leakage channels. And because there's some potassium inside that cell, you'd imagine that through time, these potassium, potassium ions would just like diffuse through the cell, and through diffusion forces only, they start to move one by one outside the cell. And because it's diffusion, you would expect that over time, this potassium would reach an equilibrium, and then the cell would end up with the same number of charges uh, inside the cell with the same number of charges um, outside the cell. Eventually they reach an equilibrium and this equilibrium here does not necessarily always have to be the same number of charges. But if it was diffusion only, it would be the same number of charges. But my example here, my cell also have fixed anions. What are those fixed anions? There are large proteins that are trapped inside the cell that cannot diffuse out of that cell. So, just like a magnet, these fixed anions will exert an electrical attraction over the cations and actually attract some of those potassium charges inside the cell. So, as a result, one by one of these potassium ions, they move inside the cell just being electrically attracted by the fixed anions and one by one and they move inside the cell. So the fixed anion, anions attract these cations and the result of that, of that is that the equilibrium is reach, reached and, but at that point you actually have an equilibrium with a different number of charges across the membrane. And that results in a potential difference, meaning a different number of charges inside the cell in relation to the outside uh, of that cell. So this is another force contributing to the establishment of that resting membrane potential. And at that point, if you actually read, and if you were talking about potassium only, if you put a voltmeter here, you'd actually read minus 90 millivolts across that plasma membrane. There's a potential difference, and that difference corresponds to minus 90 millivolts. So, eventually, this balance between the electrical attraction and diffusion of forces will determine the distribution of ions across the membrane. It, essentially, this, the, the, the same message at the beginning, the difference in the permeability of the ions, and now also the electrical attraction exerted by the fixed anions create this uneven distribution of ions 
across the membrane. And I highlighted ions here for a very specific reason, because we're talking about potassium so far, but potassium is not the only uh, ion that we have there. We have sodium ions, we have calcium ions, we have chloride uh, ions, and each one of them can have a different leakage channel like in the plasma membrane, or it can actually just cross through the plasma membrane without a leakage channel. They also contribute for the final resting membrane potential of that cell. You can actually say that there's an equilibrium potential for each ion, an equilibrium potential for potassium, an equilibrium potential for sodium, an equilibrium potential for calcium, and if you add them all together, the, the final equilibrium of, of this ensemble of ions create my resting membrane potential. But turns out that we the calcium leakage channels are about 75 times more abundant than the second one, which is the sodium channels. And therefore, potassium seems to be the major ion contributing for that um, uneven distribution of ions across the membrane. Well, on top of that, you also have what we know as a sodium potassium pump. And that, that sodium potassium pump, what it does, it puts three sodium ions outside the cell for each uh, two potassium ions that puts inside. And it does that at the cost of using energy. It actually uses, let me like change the letter here, it uses ATP, it's passive transport. So through passive transport, now you actually have a um, more disruption on that uneven distribution of the ions because now you actually create a gradient with like three sodium ions outside versus two potassium ions on the inside. The result of this is as I can change here my voltmeter here, is that we dropped from minus 90 millivolts to minus 70 millivolts because that, that sodium potassium pump also contributed to the uh, millivoltage observed there. So it's safe to say that the sodium potassium pump maintains the gradients of ions um, across the membrane. And now why it, does the, why it does that, it contributes to the degree, to the degree of negativity inside the cell. Now, this contribution to the degree of negativity inside the cell is actually called the electrogenic effect of the sodium pump, sodium potassium pump. So if somebody asks you how a resting membrane potential gets established, it's very easy to answer. Well, it's caused by difference in the permeability of ions. You have channels that leak uh, certain ions, Specifically, and most, most importantly, potassium that creates this uneven distribution. They are attracted inside the cell because of the fixed anions. And finally, the sodium potassium pump also adds to this uneven distribution, but also maintains the uneven distribution at the cost of using energy. So that's how a resting membrane potential gets established. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and um, I'll see you guys in the next podcast. Thank you.